Hi everyone, I hope you're all well out there. If you haven't been to my channel before, welcome to Rocket Rose Art. My name is Jeff. Um, this project this week is going to be a bowl and it's going to be using that uh, pattern bar that I made a couple of weeks back. But there's a funny thing about this little project. Um, quite a way through this, I suddenly realized I had a sense of deja vu. Couldn't quite pick, put my finger on exactly what it was. But in the end, it finally dawned on me what it was. So hang around to the end and you'll see exactly what it was. You actually may get that same feeling yourself during the video. Anyway, this is going to be, I think you call it a Chinese bowl. It's going to be using that, um, uh, that pattern bar. So I'll be, well, I've already cut it up, but you'll see me. I'm going to be grinding it up. Um, putting it in, did I cut it up in the other one? What can I say? That's what happens when you get a bit of brain fog as you get a bit older. But anyway, I did cut it up in that last video. Um, so in this video, we're just going to be using it. As I said, we're going to be grinding up the edges of it, getting it all nice and neat. Um, and then including that as a feature in this new bowl. Now, I agonized a little bit over how to use these. My original idea was quite a bit different. For some reason or other, I went down this track and it was going to be a platter and then eventually it ended up becoming a bowl. So that was a bit of an adventure along the way. Anyway, there's a couple of things that I'll be doing this. Obviously, you'll see me grinding it up and then incorporating it into the final uh, design and then we're going to slump it at the end into a, um, a nice bowl. Don't forget, if you do have any questions, put them in the uh, comment section below and I will try and answer them for you. Um, and put any comments in there you like, because uh, the more the better. And my thanks to everybody that has supported the channel. Um, really want to thank you all for that. If uh, you like this one at the end, don't forget to uh, hit that thumbs up button share it around with people, um, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, and don't forget there's a little thanks button down the bottom down there that you can use to, um, to uh, make a little donation to help uh, cover the cost of all this stuff. For you Steph and our bud, I really want to thank you for supporting me with that thanks button and uh, reassure you that that uh, will go into the fund to get that new diamond saw. And another thing, don't forget, over on the store, you can get through it at our website. We've got some fancy little things like aprons and mugs and all that that have patterns on them to do with glass fusing. Um, I've put those together, so uh, forgive me, I'm not the greatest graphic artist or anything like that, but uh, they're just a bit of fun. Anyway, we'll get on. Um, first thing, as usual, is to deal with the uh, materials, the design, and any special equipment we might need. So the first thing I want to show you is the design. Now, do you remember when I made this um, pattern bar? And then I cut them up into these slices. These are going to be our feature. And as you can see here, they do match as a pair. I'm going to have them as a feature strip right down the middle. Border on either side of that will be some black, a black strip. This will all be on 3mm clear and then on the sides I'll have uh, 0132 which is driftwood grey and then on the outsides a black border as well. So that's the design. As far as special equipment um, you'll need something to grind each of these pieces down into uh, a nice even rectangular shape. Um, they all need to be exactly the same width, not necessarily the same length, but certainly the same width, so they'll all match up. Um, some of them have, these ones are wet, so you can see the colour. But these ones down here from my horrible saw, as you can see, got a very coarse finish to them. So I will be probably giving them a light uh, sand just to uh, clean that up a little bit. So that's about all the equipment I think you'll need. 
you may need to square the edges as well. I'm not too sure yet. I'll wait and see how this fuses up, whether I'll bother squaring the edges. So if you haven't seen my channel before, all of this is made with Bullseye 90 COA glass. Uh, with the firing schedule I'll give you, um, you make sure you adjust them for whatever COE you're using. When I fuse this in the kiln, I'll be using thin fire paper on the shelf. And later on, I'll be putting this in a mould and I'll be spraying the mould with boron nitrite. Don't forget your safety. Make sure you wear your safety glasses when cutting glass and working, doing any work with glass, preferably. Um, and your mask when you're cleaning up. So the first thing I need to do is clean all of these up. So it'll be grinding over on my flat lap, grinding all these edges to get them all uniform and, and um, so they'll meet up nicely. And it's the final length of this that will determine the overall size of the project. Right, I've done all the grinding and we've got them all the same width um, and matching up as best as possible. So the length of that has dictated the um, size of the piece. I want it to be square. So that's 223 mils. Overall, there's 41 mils that way. So by the time I take in the three mils and I want a 10 mil strip on the outside, it means these are about 78 mils. So they're the final dimensions. Um, and now let's just uh, cut up all this glass. Before I do that, um, just something about the grinding. When you're grinding, make sure that you uh, keep this in water. Don't let the ground glass dry on it because um, it's sometimes quite hard to get off once it's ground and it'll cause problems when you're fusing it together. So make sure you keep it in water and then give it a really good scrub with a scrubbing brush or a nail brush or something like that to try and get any last bits of ground glass off. Okay, I've um, cut all the glass, as you can see here, 
and um, these are all being ground up to size so what we've got now is um, this is six mil thick these are six mil wide strips put on edge then we've got our clear under that our um, color on top of that and on this side we've got two 10 mil wide strips of black which make up our six mil so we're going to fuse all that together I am going to turn it upside down because I want this side to be the top of the piece so to try and keep everything straight I'm going to turn it upside down to do that um, I'm not worried there's some little gaps in here not really worried about that because it will all flow together by the way with these uh, feature pieces that I've cut up um, they're a little bit rough so we may get a bit of divot on that I'm hoping not but we may get a bit of divot if we do I'll um, either be just sprinkling a layer of clear over it and refusing it or I'll be sandblasting it to get rid of that. I'm not terribly worried. Um, I suppose if you don't have a sandblaster, then you don't have much choice to um, either put some clear frit over it, refuse it. And I think there are some sprays that work well as well. So I'll clean this all up now. Um, then I'll get it assembled onto the kiln shelf and into the kiln. Good morning, um, so the next morning everything has fused up and it looks quite nice. That's the top, that's the back, see everything's really straight on the back. Surprisingly though, there's something about the top, because I use clear glass on the sides here, um, I actually think I like the top better than the back, even though the lines aren't as straight. I think I like the top better than the back and I'll show you why. If I can get this up close enough, see the bubbles in there? Um, I think that's going to look a lot better than just the plain coloured black. So just hold that up against the light for you so you can see the bubbles and the transparency in the uh, feature down the middle. I think that's the nicer side so that's going to be my top once I um, slump it. Now what do I have to do to this? Well I will have to sandblast it. Obviously you can see the top up here needs some coal working on it. I'm just tossing up whether or I was tossing up whether I square up the edges completely or I just leave these rounded and just make this nice and even and round the edge there so I think I'm going to just round the edge because if I square it up because of the curve I will lose quite a bit on the sides and I don't really want to lose too much on those sides there so I'll just round these edges try and make them a bit better we do have a little bit of hazing on the pattern there as well so we'll get rid of that and there's a little bit on the back and just the uh, don't know whether you can see that, but there's some slight marks left from the um, from the saw when I cut these slabs up. So we'll do a, sand, a little bit of coal working on it, and then we'll sandblast it, do a fire polish, and then we'll slump it. Um, all the coal working's done. Um, hopefully I've rounded that off enough and now a little bit of sandblasting will help. As well as a fire polish, hopefully it'll round it over a little bit. Um, you can see once it's sandblasted just how straight the lines are on the uh, backside. 
but will be the front is just a little bit wobbly there but I really don't think it's going to matter considering this especially is going to go into a bowl. When I'm sandblasting by the way what I'm trying to do is find all the shiny spots make sure that I've got a good even matte finish on the whole thing. So now it'll go in for a fire polish. Right, there we go. It has all been polished up nicely. We don't have, um, try and get in the, there we go, in the light for you. You see we don't have any remnants of um, any hazing. Everything's worked out nice. The edges are all nice and straight now. So now it's just a matter of getting it in the bowl. And I realised, I uh, or in the mould I should say, I realised earlier on I didn't tell you which mould. This is the mould we're going to use, Japanese bowl mould. Um, obviously our piece here isn't as big as the mould, but that's fine. It'll be just a little bit shallow. As you've seen, it's all finished and I'm extremely happy with this piece. It has turned out perfectly, um, even though I don't know whether you had a sense of deja vu. I did and I finally figured out what it was. Um, a few weeks back now, I had uh, d did a different project and um, it was very similar in design. It had a a snaking feature through the middle and that was using Murini instead of this um, pattern bar here but it was very similar and as I was doing this one that's what was making me think I've seen this before anyway next one is very different in color and um, uh, quite different in shape and so forth so hopefully that'll be something new for you any questions don't forget put them in the comment section i uh, love to hear from you and if you've got any photos of anything that you've done that you'd like me to feature on the show especially photos of things that i've done projects on make sure to go to the website that's rocketroseart.com use the contact page and uh, send me those photos and i'd love to feature them here anyway if you uh, want to see another couple of videos right now you'll find some suggestions up there that subscribe button right there. Don't forget your notifications. And until the next video, I'll say bye for now.